So I finally have some time that I can sit down and give you guys my review on the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I finally took the plunge and decided to get them because I have so many images, stamps from Lawn Fawn and other companies where you really need to color them in to make the best use of them. I decided to go ahead and start with the Clean um, Color Real Brushes. The main reason is because I'm interested in Copics, but right now, um, before at least I started with these, I was really intimidated by them because there's so many colors. They're like $6 each. So I'm the type of person that if I want to start something like this, I want to be able to not be limited to what I can do. So with Copics, I feel like I'd only be able to buy a couple of colors at a time and utilize those using what stamps I have but with the these um, brush markers I was able to actually buy a pack that had a good range of different colors that I could use and really get some good effects on my coloring shading and my stamps I figured if I felt comfortable after using these brushes um, or these markers that maybe I would soon enter the Copic field. But with using these markers, I do see the advantage of having such a wide range of colors because when your colors are too far apart, it is hard to blend them together. And with these markers, you're supposed to be able to use water to really, um, you know, spread out the color and make more use of the markers, but I just found that with my watercolor paper, it just kind of ripped through the paper. So I actually liked using multiple colors and blending them together more than I liked trying to blend using um, these blender pens. Since I already had this, I decided to use this with my stamping. And I was kind of weary about it at first because um, when I tried stamping out um, these Lawn Fawn Sending Hedgehogs stamps, when I went to go die cut them, they would not cut through the paper. And um, I ended up trying some other stamps and other die cuts, and they worked just fine. So I ended up emailing um, Lawn Fawn, asking if they had any type of guarantee on their dies, and um, they actually, with sending them some pictures of what was going on with the dye and how it was cutting or not cutting, they offered to send me a replacement. So I'm still waiting on that um, because I haven't really been able to cut these guys out. So that's why I have a bunch of these that I still need to color. But anyways, this is the Artist Loft watercolor pad. It's heavy weight. It's 140 pounds. And there is 24 sheets. I'm not sure how much I paid for this. But I did get it at Michael's. And it is pretty thick paper. But like I said, all the other dies I have had no problem cutting through this. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been stamping out a bunch of images. And just taking them with me. And whenever I have some free time, I just play around with the coloring. And um, the ones I like, I keep. And I cut them out. So that's the paper I'm using. And here are some of my failed attempts at coloring. Um, this monkey, I ended up smudging, and this one was too dark. And here, um, you probably can't see it in the video, but the colors weren't blending very well. Um, same with this one. Um, I felt like this was too dark of a tip. I didn't like how these hedgehogs came out, but I redid those. You'll see those later. Some of these bowls, I was just practicing with the shading. Um, I'm still trying to get, you know, the shading with the light source correct. Um, I am by no means an expert or consider myself an expert. I am a beginner. I'm just starting, and I am going based off of some things I've seen in videos. Um... But really right now, I'm doing a lot of practice. So that's why I stamp out a bunch of images. Because if I mess up one, then I still have plenty of others to color. 
Um, so with this one, I didn't like the color of the door. And these, I couldn't really get the shading quite right. You can see here I, how I die cut these. They went through just fine. I didn't really like how those came out. I was still practicing with the blending and coloring here. This is where um, I problems figuring out what color the toucan was. I had to look it up. And the hippo, I knew it needed some pink, but I wasn't quite sure where. Because it's a very unique image. It's from close to my heart. So um, I ended up finding another way to color it that I liked it. And this elephant, um, the color names were like light gray and gray and they should have been a lot closer in color I well at least I would have thought but it turned out more of a brown looking so I ended up doing it differently um, here's the hippo the lion again with the coloring I wasn't quite sure what to do with it yet and then with this um, I couldn't I wasn't getting it to blend as well as I wanted to so what I had found online is um, Jennifer McGuire actually did a review of the markers and she posted a link to her blog where she has these um, color sheets available for a download. So I ended up downloading them and printing them on basic cardstock paper. I tried to put my watercolor paper through but it was too thick to go through my printer. So that's why over on this right side where I use the color and try to blend it out with water. It's very smudgy looking. On the left side I did color in with the marker and it didn't bleed through the paper. So I was actually pretty surprised about that. But these are all the colors that came in the 48 pack which is the second to the largest pack. The largest is 60. I think there's a 12 and there's a 24. And I wanted to get the 48 because it was a wide range of colors but I wasn't quite ready to get the 60 because I wasn't sure if I was going to like them. So, and plus the 60 was over $100. And yes, everywhere or most places online, all of them or most of them are over $100, including this 48 one. But if you go to Amazon, it is a lot cheaper. It's under $100. It's shipped straight from Japan. So you can choose like free shipping or if they're doing a deal where they make it cheaper, but then you had to pay for shipping. It still evens out to about the same price. I paid for expedited shipping so that I could get it a little bit quicker because if I hadn't, it was quoting that I would get it between like July 1st and July 30th. And right now it's June, so I wasn't willing to wait that long. So I paid a little bit extra for shipping, but even with that, it was still under $100 for this 48 pack, which is not what you're going to find on places like Simon Says Stamp or Pretty Pink Posh because they are purchasing straight from Japan and then they're reselling them. This I got straight from Japan. Now that I've got my experience with these, um, it I think it would be nice to have the 60 pack, but even so, Jennifer McGuire noted that even the 60 pack doesn't include all the colors. There's still some individual colors that you still have to purchase separately. So at this point, if I wanted more colors, I would just buy the individual colors that I wanted. I wouldn't necessarily need to get each and every color, just the ones that um, I feel would complement what I have so far well. Um, but even so, I don't even know if I'm going to purchase more because, like I said, with the practice I've had with these markers, I think my next step might be to go to Copics. But at this time, it's just not in my price range. So I'm going to keep practicing with these. Now, what I wanted to do first was I wanted to show you some of the images that I've colored, the ones that I liked, and I cut them out. Right now, I'm just keeping them in these... Um, photo box containers. I was looking for a better way to do this. I had a um, one of those fishing tackle boxes but the way the little slots were they weren't they didn't fit all the way down because they were repositionable and because of that the paper ended up sliding between the different slots so it was kind of pointless um, to try to keep them separated so I might have to get one where you can't uh, change the sizes but then you'll see that there's some stamps that I have that won't fit in like the little standard boxes so we'll see um, but for right now this is gonna work this is the um, gingerbread house one 
And so here's my gingerbread house. I have a little mistake right there, but whatever. Um, I finally felt like I got the shading down. I have a couple of reefs. There was no dye for the reefs, so I had to fussy cut these. And then I um, used a hole punch for the center so it wasn't just white. But everything else here had, um, had a dye that I could cut them out. So that is that. Okay, this one includes a couple of different stamp sets um, from Lawn Fawn. So these are all kind of food related. So I have the one that was like, I think it's called Baked with Love. So there's the, the KitchenAid, the um, piping bag. I have a bunch of different cupcakes. Plenty of cupcakes. And then um, I have the breakfast and love one, I think, maybe, possibly. So I have these trays, and I actually like the shading of this one better. I think it's more realistic, but I didn't get to get a chance to color the flower. But I like the shading of this flower pot, so um, I decided to cut them out and keep them anyway. Um, what else? This one came from that set. The salt and pepper. I have some blank ones in here still that I can color at some point. This one goes with that. Um, and then I also have a lot of these coffee mug ones. Again, like I said, I'll put all the stamp set names below, but I didn't feel like pulling them all out. So I just put them all away and reorganize them. But these are little coffee cups and hot chocolate and tea. That was a little tea bag. Um, the spoon. Oh, the spoon. Oh my gosh. This stunk. So I felt like I got the coloring right. And when I went to go cut it out, I realized that I must have put it on the stamp block crooked because the die cut didn't match up right so um, I'm gonna have to try those again but I'm pretty sure because these clear stamps are flexible that I'm pretty sure that's what happened is it just I put it on a little crooked but those are those these are the long fun crayons so color my world I got in the stamp set when it was Free and now that they came out with the dye, I went ahead and purchased the dye, even though before that I was just fussy, cut, fussy cutting these out, which either way is fine. Like, you don't really need the dye, but I went ahead and got it. Um, some of these I feel like could be better, like the shading on this one and this one, this one, the blending didn't work so well, but I feel like these ones are pretty good, and then these ones are blank that I can still do. Might keep those up. This is a stamp set from, actually no, it's a couple stamp set. So these are all the animals that I have. So these ones are um, a part of a close to my heart stamp set. So I've got alligators and I colored them two different ways. This was the original color, but then I wanted to make it more of a realistic color. This is how I ended up shading my elephant and then the hippo. The way that it, um, the lines were on it, I just put um, made those pink. Like I said, that took me some time to figure out how to utilize the lines that they had. Same with the lion. I decided that this inside part was just going to be part of his head instead of the mane. Um, there's a toucan. And here's the monkey. The little monkey. I thought I had another chicken. Right here he is. So I used um, a few different colors in both of those. So that is that. I actually really love these. These I had to fussy cut out. I didn't have a close my heart doesn't do dives for their stamps. Here's the hedgehog I was able to get out. I kind of had to like um, shimmy it, put a bunch of different pieces of paper in between the dye. Um, and the plates and all that to really get it to cut out. But these are the two that I eventually got to cut out. I had to kind of pull it at some point to 
get it all the way off. So I don't have the girl because the girl did not cut at all. So I'm waiting for that dye to come in the mail. This is from, I think, On the Mend from Lawn Fawn. Um, I actually like this one better with the red. This is actually red as well. I'm not sure which color red, but this is when I did the water coloring and trying to um, spread the color with those pens. But as you can see, it looks more pink. So that's why I like this one because it's actually the red that I wanted it to be. I have the little hamsters from Lawn Fawn. So these guys are fun to color. I did a couple of different things. I did different colors. Um, this one, I kind of gave it some spots. This one isn't blended too well, but I kept it anyway. And I cut it out. These are, it's like a Christmas one, but the reason I got it was because was because of the Chihuahua. So I colored this one like my Chihuahua Rocco. And then I did like a grayish color. And then I did the same thing with the cat. And then the bear, these I had a fussy cut, there was no dye. And then the presents, I didn't leave a white border because I'd kind of gone outside the line. So I just went ahead and cut it up to the edge. What I did want to do is I wanted to kind of demonstrate the use of these. I have a couple of images here that I stamped out that um, I haven't colored in. So I would want to show you kind of how I might do this. So I'm going to start off with these crayons. And I think I'm going to go with the orange. There's these two colors that I really love together. This one is the 70 orange. And this one is the... 52 bright yellow and I just these really blend well together so like I said I'm not an expert when it comes to coloring and shading but I've just been kind of doing what I feel is right so please don't judge if I get the coloring or the shading or light source wrong or whatever because like I said I'm Still just practicing and doing what I think is right. So it's very easy to go outside the lines. You gotta be careful when you're coloring. So I typically um, outline the areas and then I'm going to bring in the color with a lighter color pen. And like I said, these do actually blend pretty well. And you can get it pretty wet without it um, ripping the paper. And it doesn't dry too quickly. And even if it seems like it's dried, you just go over a couple times with the marker and it'll moisten it back up, for lack of a better word. And like I said, the color names can be kind of deceiving. Because like I showed you, this was a bright yellow and an orange together. And I feel like together they make a really pretty orange. So that's where the color charts really come in handy. So you can see what the actual color is and not just go by the color name. All right, so that's my orange crayon. Then I'm going to use this 41 light green and 
45 pale green just to see how it comes out like I said I like to color the edges And then I use the lighter color to blend, bring the color in. I'm going to start off with the wine. So that's the darker one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just did that the opposite. I think the top of the bottom up here should be the darker color, but once it's blended, I can't really tell anyway. So that is my reef. I do want to show you what it is like to use the um, the blender pen so you can kind of see the difference already this is ripping up the paper um, now let's go ahead and do the red now you can see with this that wine red that was dark when you blend out the color, it's giving you more of a pinkish color than keeping with that solid red. But that is that. And I will go ahead and do one more to show you the difference. This one's a piping bag. So this one is 50 yellow. This one is a 51 lemon yellow, which are right next to each other on the chart. Now with stamps like this, I use the lines to help me figure out where the shading should be. Now if I were to just color in, the two colors wouldn't seem like they go together well. But once you start picking up that color and blending it out, it looks a lot better. And then um, I just use this light gray to do the tip. Since the tips are silver. I mean, technically that part's white, but whatever. Alright, so that is with the two brush markers. So now I'm going to take the yellow. And then we're going to use the blender pen to blend it out. Really sure why, but it actually seems to be picking up some of the black from the stays on ink. And see, I'm not even done blending, but it's already ripping up the paper. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm gonna use this. Gray, I'm gonna blend that out as well. It kind of gets rid of the color, but so there is a difference there. Here's the difference here. So as you can see, I think it's just like Copics, it's a lot better to just blend the two colors together rather than actually using like watercoloring and using a blender pen. I mean, maybe for small spaces, I think the blender pen might work. For the bottom, it wasn't too bad. Um, but like I said, it does lighten the color. So if you want that true color that it already is, using that 
blender pen is going to take away some of that color. So, um, and that's why I tried to do this so that you could see once you add the water or the blending, what color comes out of it. And it is a much lighter color. So I am going to list all the products below to all the SAM sets. Um, I'm not going to list the dyes, but I'm going to list the SAM sets. And I'm going to list the link to where I got my markers on Amazon, as well as the link to Jennifer McGuire's download for these color charts. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.